In situations like the video you're talking about with the missing 43, um, I decided to do video in that case because um, I'd already covered um, the whole mass disappearance um, quite sort of substantially and the correspondent before me. I mean, it's been a huge political issue here in Mexico. Um, and so when they staged the hunger strike, um, other than the fact that they were staging the hunger strike, there wasn't that much new stuff to say in terms of the political situation or the state of the case. Um, so I wanted to use video to try and communicate just the, the experience of one parent who was the father of one of those kids who was taken and you know, it's this case we've been exposed to hugely here in Mexico, but maybe, you know, in the US, they haven't seen that many of the parents actually talking about um, what happened and what the consequences of, of that have been for them and their families and their community. Um, so in the case of that Missing 43 video, I felt like doing video um, from the hunger strike was a good way to take a more emotional picture of what those parents were going through. I mean, the thing is about the missing 43 is most of those parents have now become quite media savvy. The, the students disappeared more than a year ago. Nearly all the parents have done TV and newspaper interviews. So, to a certain extent, you felt that there was a, sort of a level of preparation in terms of the families and their attitude towards the media. And clearly, that whole event was staged to not only make a political point, but to attract media attention. I really wanted the dad to look down the lens because I think that it's more intimate when someone is looking straight down the lens of the camera. Sadly, those conversations are things that I've had hundreds and hundreds of them because Mexico is sort of in a pretty dire human rights situation right now. For those 43 people who are missing, there are thousands of others. The Mexican government latest official figures uh, estimate that about 25,000 people are currently missing in Mexico. Um, abducted, kidnapped, disappeared on their way to work, you know, left home, never came, never came back, all sorts of different circumstances. Um, and it's been an issue I've covered a great deal as a journalist here, both in text and video. I mean, it depends who I'm working for. I work for all sorts of people down here. I'm, I'm the shoot edit for the BBC. I do stuff for the Financial Times, The Guardian, done a few bits and pieces for the New York Times, um, you know, Al Jazeera. I mean, I, I wear lots of different hats. Sometimes I'm working as a VJ. Sometimes I'm working as a as just the camera person with a correspondent and a producer. Sometimes I'm working as a producer with a camera person. Um, you tend to find that when you're doing news, you have a lot less time to really put much contemplation into visual storytelling and, and what have you. Um, so the level of thought that goes into things really depends on what it is that I'm working on. as students you need to be you know you need to learn those journalistic traditions which remain the same despite the technology but I think you also need to take a look at the market 
and look at what's you know look at the opportunities out there and what editors need and want you know and I think if you're an old if you're like a, a, an established war correspondent with a huge journalistic career behind you you can get away with that but if you're a 20 something coming on and you're taking a job at a local newspaper you need to be able to show the editor that you have those those multimedia capabilities you know whether it comes to managing a basic wordpress content management system shooting off a decent dslr photo stringing together a decent video edit or putting together a 1000 word piece i think that increasingly those things you know are the way to get <laughs> the way to getting jobs nowadays say hi to search you for me